Gary Owen held on to earn his first Cup Series win in New Hampshire after a dramatic last handful of laps, locking him into the playoffs. Now the Cup Series heads into Pocono, where Owen showed a lot of speed earlier in the season. Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat 3 Career Mode. In today's episode, we have a quick recap of how Haley Deegan did in the truck race for our team. And we also have our Cup race in Pocono for the second time of the season in Pocono. Coming off of our first career win in New Hampshire as well as coming off of Haley Deegan's first career win that she got in Chicago. And as we came to Kentucky, I was hoping that we were going to be able to have a truck that was pretty similar to Chicago, very strong, but it wasn't really the case this time around. We certainly had a better truck than what she qualified in. She started P16 and you know dropped back starting on the outside line just a little bit at the start of the race, but as we came through the race down towards the uh, final lap of this race, she did work her way up to P10 as she came through the final few corners behind the uh, 22, I believe that is, of Austin Wayne Self as she came out of turn four for the final time to cross the line. Haley Deegan would get P10 for a nice solid top 10 finish and really not much matters too much now for the last handful of races in the regular season for trucks. We're just trying to make sure that she stays safe in the playoffs right now and that's the main goal as long as we don't really get a new winner. She should be okay so hopefully maybe she can go get a win in Eldora. I would expect her to maybe, maybe be able to pull off something there so we'll see what she can do once we get to Eldora which I believe is the next truck race on the schedule but now it's time to shift focus to our cup race in Pocono we had quite a bit of speed there in the first time we came through there this season so hopefully we can have the same thing this time around as we have a quick point standings check as we see Haley Deegan currently the last seed now in the playoffs so certainly not very safe but hopefully it will be enough to lock her in once we hit the last race of the playoffs but now as we come to qualifying in my cup event weekend we sit p4 currently in session two and uh this is after i completed my lap i sit at 51.016 and i came through the tunnel turn trying to complete a second lap so we could maybe gain some time but you see I completely screw up the tunnel turn and hit the wall on exit and decide to bail on the lap so we qualify P17 with a 51.016 for Pocono. Today the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series makes its final stop at Pocono Raceway for the running of the Gander Outdoors 400. Now it's always fun coming to this unique 2.5 mile triangle shaped speedway all three turns are different, and the banking in those turns is far less than most tracks of its size. The three straightaways are all different lengths, too. This track operates more like a road course than a speedway with all the gear shifting required. That means crew chiefs will once again be on the hot seat as they try to find that perfect setup that will get their drivers to victory lane. All right, we are ready to go green in Pocono for the Gander Outdoors 400. AJ Allmendinger well prepared for this race, apparently. Kyle Busch, your pole winner on the outside pole. Kevin Harvick in the Mobile One Ford. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr. sent to the back as he had an engine change after qualifying. Your only driver sent to the rear of the field for this race as we get ready to go green in Pocono. Starting around the 34, Michael McDowell, the green flag is out. And we are underway for the second and final race in Pocono of the season now as we start alongside the 12 of Ryan Blaney as we make the long charge down into turn one as Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick pretty even side by side as we go through turns one and two now as Kyle Busch should edge him out by the time we get out of turns one with Denny Hamlin on his back bumper as we are alongside the 21 of Paul Menard on the exit of turn one. Now down the straightaway behind the 34 McDowell still as we approach the tunnel turn for the first time getting into the back of him as we go into the tunnel turn the 21 pushes up the track into us and pushes us way wide now is that we run into trouble very early in this race as that pushes us way behind all the way outside the top 20 in the field as we come through turns three. Now we're going to have to dig ourselves out of a hole for sure in this race as we approach the back bumper of the 32 of Matt Benedetto as we look to his inside immediately as we blow right on by him and as you see the 88 of Bowman and a bunch of these guys back here very slow considered to the speed that we have in this car as you make a move to the inside of Trevor Bain as we go into turns one so certainly uh, that contact with the 21 was a setback I don't, I don't know why he pushed up the track into me but um, I guess there really wasn't much that we could do about it unless I noticed it earlier I could have maybe moved up the track to let him 
move up himself, but by lap three in this race, we did get back up into the top 20 and actually pretty close to the back bumper now of the 21 of Paul Menard as we look on the inside of the 34 of Michael McDowell once again as we started right behind him in this race and we get ahead of him as now we get to the inside and alongside our teammate Jamie McMurray down the back straightaway and we clear him pretty easily as well to get up to P16 and we continue to work our way forward throughout the rest of this stage as we got up to P11 now looking on the inside of Kurt Busch as we approach the tunnel turn trying to enter the top 10 behind the 21 of Menard as we come through the tunnel turn now alongside the 41 pushing up the track on exit but we do keep the car off of him now as we look to the inside of the 48 of Jimmy Johnson as we've had a few run-ins with him throughout this season so far but looking to get by him with no problems as we come out of turn three pushing up the track a little bit just clear for the moment of the 48 but you see he battles back on the outside side drafting me across the line so I decide you know two can play that game as we decide to side draft him as well on the later half of the front straightaway as we go into turns one trying to clear the 48 as I push way up the track and we do clear him with ease now as we sit in P9 at lap 7 at this point now as we come to lap 8 still P9 running down Paul Menard in the 21 car a big run down the straightaway on him but you see early the stage ends early with a caution I'm not sure who crashed but unfortunately it halts a bit of our progress as the stage ends uh, three or four laps early as Kyle Busch wins the stage to get a playoff point. Kyle Busch is still winless and you see I took two tires and went to the front. Unfortunately that's not what I wanted to do. I was hoping that the AI were going to take two tires but that was not the case. Now as we restart stage two as the leader which really could work out. We can take gambles like this now that we got a win but this was not intended to be a gamble but it turns out to be one anyways as we come into turns one and two leading the field now in front of Kyle bushes we get loose through the center of one as we exit the corner in front of the 18 still as Harvick is on his back bumper as we try to hold these guys off we're likely not going to be able to hold on to the lead very long in this race I would not be surprised if we got past really after the first lap I'm just trying to lead this first lap of stage one as we exit the tunnel turn Harvick now alongside the 18 of Kyle Busch behind me Almendinger in the background he has been having a solid race just like the pre-race note said as now Harvick gets clear of the 18 of Kyle Busch behind me in my mirror as we come out of turns three clear still for the moment as we come across the line now to lead our first lap of this race now as Harvick approaches our back bumper and I decide to play defense mode we swing way to the left of the track to protect the bottom as we come into turns one Harvick on my bumper looking for a chance to get to my inside as we push up the track a little bit but on the exit of the corner we are able to hold him off now down the back straightaway now as he starts to get a run on us, as you see in the mirror, he's closing up as we close in on the tunnel turn. We're going to hold him off for the moment as we go through the entrance and exit of the tunnel turn. Now Eric Jones sits behind the four of Harvick for P3 as we get defensive once again, trying to keep that bottom line protected as we come into turns three through the center of the corner. Really good on the entrance of the corner, but the center is really where my car seems to be lacking at this point in the race as we exit the corner. Now as we come to lap six, and this is when Harvick finally he gets to my inside and I decided to just stay to the side and let him go because it really wasn't worth trying to hold him off as much as I was because we were clearly slower as you see as soon as I moved over he drove right on by so now as we come down the back straightaway approaching the tunnel turn we do clear the 20 of Eric Jones so he's not able to get up to P2 and as we come through the tunnel turn now sitting comfortably in the second position but as we kind of progress throughout the rest of the stage you're going to see that he was able to get ahead of me so we fell back to P3 as Logano now sits behind me with just two laps to go in stage two and now through the center of the corner we get extremely loose on exit now is Logano that allows him to get to my inside and drive right on by as we lose quite a bit of momentum but thankfully the draft is huge at this track and that allows me to maintain speed by the time we got to the halfway point in the straightaway as we come through the tunnel turn approaching the white flag in stage two this time by as now we try to get a run once again on Logano as we go into turns three and you're going to see up ahead that Kevin Harvick is no longer leading this race he did fall back now as we get really loose and it's Kurt Busch leading as we exit turn three and that allows Menard to get to my inside and we get put in the wall for a moment and now he hits me again and we're into the wall again as we cross the line the white flag is out we lose the position from that and 
and that's the second time Menard has run into us in this race now as we approach turn one still in the top five in this stage as we come through turns one for the final time in stage one and there's the end of the stage again as stage two just like stage one will end early I'm not sure what caused the end of this one either as I could not find anything in the replay but this time around we're going to be taking four tires because we ran longer the stage so you would think the AI would take four tires again no they took two tires this time and we took four and this puts us way behind in stage three to get going as the green flag is out now for the final stage of this race behind the 19 of Daniel Suarez. Approaching his back bumper as we come down into turn one on the inside of the 43 of Bubba Wallace. And I'm not going to make no stupid three wide move just yet into turn one. But he does leave the hole open and I look for a moment but I thought better of it now as he slows way up. And we do get to his inside kind of unintentionally got to the bottom of the 19 as we exit turn one. As he is able to clear me down the straightaway. So P19 right now with 14 laps to go in this race. Certainly got to dig ourselves out of a hole once again like we had to do at the very start of this race now as we come through the tunnel turn easily going to get ahead of Bubba Wallace as we look to the inside of Suarez the 34 and the 9 a little bit slow down the straightaway as we look into turns 3 now 3 wide with the Suarez and Elliott as we get right on that yellow line as we exit the corner ahead now for P16 down the straightaway and already looking like we can make a move to the inside of the 34 as he pulls away a little bit trying to make it 3 wide here with the 34 and the 78 of Truex as we look into turns 3 we finally get to the inside of these guys as we come into turns one now Austin Dillon just ahead of us as we try to close in on him as we make a little bit of contact with the 34 of McDowell but no harm done as we go down the back straightaway still side by side with the 34 of McDowell with Truex behind him as we approach the tunnel turn making a little bit of contact with him trying to side draft him I didn't want to hit him but we did anyways as we come through the tunnel turn and do clear him to get P14 from McDowell with just over 12 laps to go in this race and once again we slowly worked our way forwards throughout the rest of this stage as by the time we hit about 10 laps to go we were able to pass the 3 and the 48 to get up to P12 behind the 12 and 14 of Blaney and Clint Boyer battling side by side as we try to get into a top 10 position as we come into turn 1 Boyer goes a little bit wide allowing Blaney to get the edge as we close in on this battle get into the back of Blaney trying to help him and that gets me loose as we move up into the 14 into the side of the 14 as we exit the corner down the back straight away and we certainly lose momentum and that's not the first time we've made some interesting contact with Boyer as we just a couple races ago had a bit of an incident with him in Kentucky which led to me just intentionally taking him out on the last lap now as we're into it once again with Boyer as we look to his inside going into turns three closing on his door a little bit as we go into the corner hitting the back of the 12 once again now as you exit turn three trying to push the 14 up the track a little bit as we make a little bit more contact with the 14 as he's going to get the run down the straightaway now as he completely destroyed my, my momentum by shooting me down the track so that's the second time within a lap that we've run into the back of the 14 and once again by lap 32 we close back up on the 14 and I won't lie you see I kind of drove it in pretty deep there I was trying to get into the back of the 14 because I was starting to get a little bit aggravated with him once again now as we look to his inside with eight laps to go in this race getting right on his door as we enter turns one hopefully we should be able to clear the 14 this time as we do edge out in front of him and finally are able to make the pass and we pass a couple more cars to get a the P8 behind the 88 of Alex Bowman as we look to get, to get up to P7 as we come into the tunnel turn now as we get a solid entrance and there's the caution another caution as Joey Logano leads and it's going to now be a three or four lap dash to the end of this race now I will say I did want a caution but I was hoping we were going to be on the inside of the line by the time we got a caution so we're going to have to pretty much force our way to the bottom of the track if we want to have a chance here as we get ready to go green with just a handful of laps to go three laps to go in Pocono on the back bumper of the 20 of Jones and immediately we get a really good restart allowing me to force my way down to the inside line as we approach turn one as Logano and Harvick battle side by side and there we are now on the inside line behind the 41 making it three wide with the 18 and 20 as the 20 
drops back and we have made a huge restart gain now from P8 to 4 is uh, by the time we exit turn 1 on the back bumper of the 41 alongside the 4 of Harvick as now we look to the inside of Kurt Busch as we approach the tunnel turn but he has got too much speed as he clears me by the time we come through the tunnel turn now on the exit up to P3 coming the two laps to go certainly one of the best restarts I've had in my career so far since I've joined the Cup Series now as we hit the back bumper of the 41 now causing me to get pretty loose on the exit of the corner and actually that hope Kurt Busch as he gets alongside the 22 of Logano trying to take the lead as we hit two laps to go in this race. Kurt Busch still looking on the inside of Joey Logano as Keselowski looks on our left rear just about as we come into turns one. A big run on the two front runners, but now the two looks on my inside and I decide to give him the room, which may have been a mistake as we come into turn two, pushing a little bit wide, allowing the two to get alongside as Kurt Busch is clear of Joey Logano for the lead down the back straightaway now as we give the 22 a big shove here coming into the tunnel turn, trying to clear the two of Keselowski, but unfortunately I couldn't get clear and that allows Kyle Busch to my inside as he pushes up a bit. So we have to accommodate to him as we also push up through the, out the tunnel turn. Hopefully clearing Kyle Busch as we come into turns three as we do indeed clear the 18. But I kind of overshoot turns three allowing the 18 to get to my inside as we get a little bit loose as well. As Kurt Busch leads us to the white flag as Keselowski now looks to the inside of his Penske teammate Joey Logano as the white flag is in the air as Kurt Busch tries to hang on for the victory here in Pocono as we try to, cl try to clear the 18 of Kyle Busch into turns one. But we are unable to do so now as we go way up the track getting a little bit loose once again as we come out of turns one Kyle Busch looking to the inside of Joey Logano for P3 as we have a big run down the back straightaway and we're going to make a big move to the inside of the 18 a last chance diving move to the inside of Kyle Busch as we go into the into the tunnel turn side by side as he pushes up a bit and we push him way wide on the exit of the tunnel turn down the back straightaway for the final time as Kurt Busch tries to hang on to the victory as we make a little bit of contact with the 18 of Kyle Busch going into the final corner as he tries to use the crossover move on me but out of the final corner Kurt Busch leads us to the checkered flag as he's going to hang on to get the victory as we bring the car home in P4 in Pocono. Certainly a much better finish than I thought we were going to get as when the caution came out we were sitting in P8 and we had a very very good restart which allowed me to rally up to P4 as we almost got up to second and almost had a chance at winning this race but unfortunately we just couldn't pull that off as um, we got P4 just ahead of fifth place Kyle Busch as we had a pretty solid battle with him coming to the line on the last lap now as we sit P5 in the regular season standings Kurt Busch now with three wins and quite a few playoff points so he's looking to maybe maybe be a favorite once we hit playoff time now with just five races left uh, until the playoffs as Denny Hamlin wants to be just like me when he grows up even though he's already like 38 years old uh, AJ Allmendinger Tweets us with a good race. Chris Busher, everyone's happy with us right now. And I was honestly expecting Kyle Busch to be a little unhappy. But thankfully he wasn't as we know he is extremely, extremely close to being a rival. As now in the next episode we will have our second road course race of the season of three now. Obviously with the Roval being included. So Watkins Glen, usually a fairly solid track for me. So hopefully we can come out of there with a solid finish. Maybe a top five would be uh, ideal as we sit now in P5, like I said, in the regular season standings and P7 in the playoff standings with one win and eight playoff points as Harvick leads away with 23 playoff points and three wins. So that'll do it for this episode. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to comment, like, subscribe. Those would all be very appreciated. Thank you for taking the time out of your guys' day to sit here and watch one of my videos. That is awesome. Awesome of you guys to do, and I will see you guys in the next one for Watkins Glen. Take care, everybody.